Comrade Paul Galani, I notice, uh, Paul, that they have honored you with this. This is the same airplane that, that I was flying, by the A-4 Skyhawk, by the way, and I, Paul probably didn't mention to you that it doesn't take a lot of talent to get shot down. Basically. I'm sure that some of our, I intercepted a surface-to-air missile with my own airplane, which is, as you well know, a six driver, I believe. Yes, sir. And uh, also, and so Paul, thank you, and thank you for your friendship. Those I know best and love most are those I had the honor of serving with. Today I received the endorsement of a great defender of the family, the rights of the unborn, and the values and principles that we stand for and fight for in America every day, and he's been a leader in that, a great leader in our Christian community, Gary Bauer. Gary, Bauer. Gary thank you. about George Allen, great governor, great member of the United States Senate. He and I have yeah. I'll tell you, the reason today why greedy politicians and state legislators and others uh, have not gotten their hands on your money is because George Allen stood up and fought for and kept the internet tax from happening. Yeah. And I'm very grateful for that. Yeah. And my old friend, uh, John Warner, Chairman of the Armed Services Committee, I've served under him for many, many years. And John, there's, uh, as many of you know, he started out in the United States Marine Corps in World War II and in Korea. I think that's your airplane over there, John. That <laughs> <laughs> was a biplane around here. <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, you know, John has served his country for all the way back to the, to the Great War and ever since, and uh, um, there's, there's no one who can, who is irreplaceable in the United States Senate, but I'll tell you, there is no more respected member of the United States Senate than my friend John Warner. Thank you for it. So I have to tell you the following story because uh, I, I'm with John. Not before, long before I was uh, retired from the United States Navy. I was over at uh, the Naval Air Station Oceana at the Officers Club at the bar having a Coca-Cola. Uh -huh. <laughs> there was a guy standing next to me. He was really kind of old and senile looking. He looked a lot like Governor Gilmore, as a matter of fact. <laughs> I noticed that he was wearing one stripe on his sleeve, which you know is the lowest rank you can have and still be an officer. And I said, how long are we in the Navy? He said, 37 years. I said, really? He said, yeah. I said, how come you weren't promoted? He says, well, here's what happened. I was at the first squadron at Guadalcanal early in World War II. Every single night, one Japanese airplane, they called him Wars right. Machine Charlie, yep, used to fly over our field. Yep. The siren would go off, I'd have to get out of my tent, get in the airplane, start the engine, sit there. After a while, because it was just Wars Machine Charlie, this one airplane, the all clear siren would go off, and I'd shut down the engine of my airplane get out of the cockpit and go to bed. Well, it was Washington killing me. Charlie I wouldn't get any sleep. The food was lousy. I solved the problem. I went out in the jungle and I caught this monkey. I trained this monkey that when the siren went, go out, went off, he would come out of the jungle, get in my airplane, start the engine, sit there, and then when the all-clear siren would go off, he would shut down the engine of my airplane and go back in the jungle. It was wonderful. I was sleeping like a baby every night. Well, sure enough, one night, it was not Wash Machine Charlie. It was a great, huge Japanese air raid. I came out of my tent just in time to see that monkey taken off in my airplane. <laughs> he was a Democrat, wasn't he? I certainly see why you're not <laughs> He said, that's not what makes me mad. The monkey retired as an admiral. <laughs> Paul and I served with that monkey. Anyway, I want, I want to thank you for being here. My friends, there's a lot at stake in this election. I, I, I really would be honored by your support and your vote tomorrow as you go to the polls, and I believe that what happens in Virginia tomorrow will be another step to the nomination of my party for President of the United States and then President of the United States. I'm very honored by your support.
uh, I think there's going to be a very big difference between my candidacy and the Democrat candidate. I think it's going to be about whether we should raise your taxes or lower your taxes. I think it's whether we should have bigger government or less government. I think it's whether, as the Democrats want, that the government would take over the health care system in America or those health care decisions made by the families in America. I think there's going to be a big difference about, difference about our nation's security. I, I want to continue this search, which as you know is succeeding. They want to set a date for surrender. I will never surrender in Iraq. because I know that you've been here for a while and I don't want to take too much time, but I need to talk to you about the economy. We all know that there's problems. We know that there's challenges. We don't know, I don't, I believe that the fundamentals of our economy are strong, but I also recognize as you do that there are difficulties. Now the first thing I think that we need to do is to make the Bush tax cuts permanent so that the American not experience tax increase. I think the next thing we need to do is remove this evil that a lot of Americans are not even aware of. It's called the alternate minimum tax. Yes. It was designed originally yeah. for only the wealthiest of Americans. Now it is threatening the incomes of 25 million American families, my friends. We got to appeal that, repeal that tax. Yes. 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 I want to tell you something I don't think a lot of Americans know. Do you know that we have the second highest tax on corporations in America in the world? In the world? And that's why businesses leave America. That's why we lose jobs from America. My friends, we've got to cut that, that corporate tax rate. And we need to keep jobs in the United States. We don't want to retire to borrow money from China. That's right. So, yeah. there's, yeah. We need to uh, give people uh, a chance to depreciate in one year anything that they buy that they need in the way of equipment or, or, or other things that they need to make their business grow. My friends, I understand. I understand that we have some tough decisions ahead of us. I believe this stimulus package should have been passed, but I also think we need lower taxes for Americans, particularly at this time, and we need reg less regulation, and we need to control spending Amen. in Washington, D.C. Yeah. Let's, let's be clear. Unfortunately, unfortunately, when we came to power in 1994, we Republicans, to change government, government changed us. And we went on a spending spree, my friends, and it was earmarked in pork barrel spending. George was just mentioning a couple of them. My favorite was the $3 million of your tax dollars we spent to study the DNA of bears in Montana. Now, I don't know if that was a paternity issue or a criminal issue. It was your money. It was your it was your money that they were spending, not theirs. My friends, in the last two years, the president signed into law $36 billion worth of earmark and pork barrel spending. Now, for that same amount of money, we could have had a $1,000 tax credit for every child in America. Now, what do you want? A bridge to nowhere? Or do you want a $1,000 tax credit for every child in America? I know you know that. 